So good morning and uh, good afternoon. Uh, I welcome you all for this uh, 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 lecture on uh, a new uh, topic, new module of our uh, engineering mechanics course. So it's module three and we are going to uh, uh, study about theory of friction. So that's again uh, particularly dry friction is what we are going to study. When I say dry friction, there is also called a fluid friction. So what is the difference between dry friction and fluid friction? If you have a contacting surfaces, they are separated by a film of fluid that can be a liquid or it can be a gas. Then it is called a fluid friction study. So it is very important that you understand the property of fluid uh, separating the surfaces or uh, um, um, lying between the two contacting surfaces as there is an expected uh, relative motion of the surfaces. Uh, then the fluid property, viscosity, all are very important. So that's more involved study, which you will be studying that in your uh, uh, fluid uh, uh, mechanics course. And uh, in rigid body mechanics, we are going to look at the surfaces which are uh, having the straight contact and dry surface contact. They are not even uh, lubricated surfaces that we see because we are going to study the friction, what is called the Coulomb friction, correct? So why is it Coulomb friction? Uh, it is by the scientist uh, C. A. Coulomb. He has uh, done an extensive number of uh, experiments to understand this uh, uh, friction force behavior, right? Uh, friction, frictional characteristics. Uh, he has done it uh, in the year uh, 1781 itself. So it is in 17th century itself. Uh, people first had uh, uh, developed many theories on this uh, dry friction. And one such a very important uh, person is uh, C. A. Coulomb, and uh, the dry friction is named after his name, Coulomb friction as well. <laughs> so uh, today's module we are going to study about uh, this. <clears throat> so we are not going to uh, uh, look at more of theoretical aspect. Rather, how, what does this friction force? How is it going to be part of our free, free body diagram? So you are already been uh, very clear with your free body diagram. Uh, and we are solving problems of static equilibrium problem. So the friction force is not necessarily only with the static equilibrium problem. It can also be present in a dynamic equilibrium problems. In dynamics, we are going to look at uh, bodies which are under motion. A vehicle is uh, uh, translating in a highway. A big wheel is rotating about an axis. Right. So we are going to study the different problems like that. So there is a pair of gears which are uh, uh, there in the uh, rotating uh, uh, shafts so that the power transmission can take place. So there is a contacting of uh, the teeth of your um, gears. So you see everywhere uh, if uh, you have a rough surface, you have friction that comes. Another classical example of friction where you can you see it is important in a case of a screw jack. So you know screw jack is there in everyone's car uh, in the dicky. So you, any time you are required to uh, attend um, uh, uh, necessary of changing of your wheels, you have to lift your axle. So you use that uh, element called a jack. So that can be hydraulic jack today it's available or uh, it can also be a screw jack where you can manually uh, uh, lift your axle. So if you see that the friction concept is very important uh, in design of your screw jacks. Because when you lift your vehicle and you uh, you are expecting that the lifted vehicle will stay there itself and you can work on your uh, changing of your wheels and suddenly it is falling down. The jack is not holding it. It's falling down. What would happen? Uh, entire vehicle axle will fall on your thigh and then you know, you, uh, it would be a problem. If you are underneath of the vehicle, think what would happen. So such kind of scenarios to avoid the friction uh, is playing an important role of design of uh, screw jacks. So these are all some of the important uh, aspects. So other example, if you look at, you are uh, um, confidently uh, going on uh, uh, climbing up the ladder uh, to the uh, uh, height that you want to go and do painting on a wall and so on, or do some mm, mm, small um, necessary work on a, a mechanical system there or some electronic system there. So you are uh, so much uh, confident that the ladder would hold you. Uh, it won't slip down. It's all because of the friction uh, that is uh, there in the contact of your ladder and the floor uh, where it is in contact, right? 
So if you see there are um, uh, important thing in power transmission, uh, look at the belt power transmission. So you have to transfer power from one shaft to the other shaft. Um, where you can have an element which connects the transmission is belt. So you see there is something called a belt friction. So friction is there everywhere. We were just uh, so far studying without uh, just accounting it uh, for the simplicity of understanding the static principles. As you have understood now clearly, you can easily incorporate uh, the important force called the friction force in our free body diagram. Uh, when you study the static equilibrium problems. So that's essentially what is that uh, objective of this module three uh, that we are going to look at it. So let me just uh, um, share my Act Inspire board for today's class. <laughs> so how can you uh, define by statement? I would just write uh, to begin this lecture on this board uh, the definition of friction force as it is available in the standard textbook, right? Uh, just a minute. Does open file transfer? I'm unable to open this board. Just a minute. Yeah. So are you able to see the board? I, I just share. <coughs> there are 39 students uh, now. And there are uh, uh, 12 more to join. Uh, let me share uh, my active inspire board now. Uh, is it visible to all of you? Yes, sir. So this is lecture number. What is this lecture number? Can anyone tell? 20, oh, sir. 20. Yeah. And today's date is 24. 3, 20, 21. <clears throat> and we are going to start with a new module. Module three friction. And this friction is dry friction. Otherwise called or it's called coulomb friction. <coughs> right? Yeah, so uh, as I had given you many examples that uh, where do you see this uh, requirement of friction, uh, especially in power transmission and uh, holding an equilibrium, you see that uh, this friction is very important uh, uh, in case of uh, uh, carefully uh, generating your tractive forces in your vehicle, uh, tire road interaction and so on. There are many applications. If friction is not there, it's a smooth surface. We cannot even walk on the surface. So we are able to walk without uh, uh, no, uh, having any disturbance. We steadily are able to walk from one point to the other point is because there is a necessary sufficient friction that is there between our uh, food surface to a floor surface. So friction is an important aspect of our mechanical engineering. <laughs> so. Uh, how can you define this friction? A friction may be defined as a force of resistance acting on a body which prevents or retards slipping of body relative to a second body or surface with which it is in contact. So this is the statement as it is I just read out from the textbook. So this force always acts tangent to the surface. So it will it will be exactly tangential direction to the surface. Two surfaces are meeting, it will be along the surface. So it will always be uh, directed along the uh, direction of tangent, tangent to the surface at points of contact with other bodies and is directed so as to oppose or uh, oppose the possible or existing uh, motion of the body relative to the other points, right? 
So this all, uh, this may be a statement uh, that is available from a, a classical textbook. But to understand this uh, dry friction concept, let me just explain you with the demonstration. So what am I going to do? I'm just going to consider a surface now. And I call this surface is not a smooth surface, it's a rough surface. rough surface. So what do you mean by rough surface? The road surface is a rough surface. The cement concrete road surface is a rough surface. The floor that we walk uh, where it's uh, a cemented uh, floor, it's a rough surface. The tiles which are laid uh, is a uh, rough surface, but relatively it may not be that rough as that of a concrete uh, or as that of um, the other surface. So I walk on a wooden block. So it is a rough surface. So this is what is roughness. So the roughness is characterized by an important property of the surface, what is called mu. What is that is? Coefficient of static friction. So this mu is what is describing the surface, right? Okay. So what does this mean all let us understand. So now I take a surface which is not smooth, which is a rough surface. On this surface, I have a block. All right, so consider this block just a minute, it's slipping. This block, which weighs W, now, what is the state of this block on this rough surface? It's just sitting nicely without any disturbance. It is under static equilibrium, right? Because it will be balanced uh, by its reaction. So, if this is a um, block which has got an uniformly distributed load, this weight is now at the CG location I just marked, but uh, if you look at this material is made of homogeneous material, the distribution of uh, weight uh, across this uh, uh, complete uh, geometry, the volume is uh, uniform. So constant density material, then I would have the reaction also is uniform and its resultant will act here, which is N. The reaction result is what is N here. So this is in a balanced state. So that the block is just kept on the rough surface is as it is there. So the diagram what I have drawn is a free body diagram of this state. So what is this state? This state is one. What is the state? One is called a static equilibrium state. Right? Now I'm going to push this with a certain load. So I apply some force P and I try to push this. I see that there is no change in the state. It is still staying there. So what would happen? Why is it so? Why is it so? This is a block of weight W. I just apply some 10 Newton force here, but I see that there is no change in this. Why is it so? Can anyone so answer? Because, so because the, the force you are putting has an equal and opposite uh, probably force reacting towards it. That's why it's not moving. Yeah, so what is that uh, opposite reaction force? Friction, sir. Friction. Friction. Yeah, so that would be acting where? It will be acting at the tangent of the contacting surfaces in tangential direction. That's why the, the location where you have to draw the friction forces in this direction. So this is my friction force. So now what does happen? The application of force P is equal to the force friction that has come. So now my question is, uh, if I keep increasing this value P, will you get uh, this friction force keep increasing and it is going to be always in uh, stationary condition? No, no, sir. No. Why no. is it so? Sir, at one point of time, the force, if you keep on increasing the force, at one point of time, P will overtake X, which is the friction force, then your body will start moving. Yeah, P is overtaking, you can say, or you can say that is the maximum value of friction uh, that is uh, conforming the equilibrium, right? Anything that's only possible. So maximum value is restricted. So if I have my P value 
unrestricted. I can have 10 Newton, 20 Newton, 30 Newton, 40 Newton, and so on. I can keep on increase it. I have a mechanism here, right? But uh, the surface in contact cannot develop maximum resistance opposing force at the contact surface. So that is limited for the equilibrium. That's the maximum force available for equilibrium, right? And that state is what is state two. At that time, this F is called maximum static friction force, right? So till then, uh, uh, it is called a simply static uh, friction force. friction force or static friction force when it is under equilibrium right then what is this fs so i just to refer this only by letter f first state what is fs is the maximum value of static frictional force for equilibrium for equilibrium right because uh, if this is uh, achieved after that you no know, this is limited i can keep increasing so p overtakes as you said correctly this maximum value then uh, i cannot balance that excess force so what is the result what is the effect in this system What is the effect in the system? The block will translate in the direction of an unbalanced force. What is an unbalanced force? P minus Fs. There is an unbalanced force. P is more than Fs. So it will be moving in this direction. It will be accelerating in this direction. So that is the effect. So when you say this friction force that we are going to look at in our module 3, which is in static equilibrium, we look at till here. Supposing if it is uh, uh, P value overtakes Fs value, then I have that friction force called as F subscript K called <coughs> kinetic friction. Force. Kinetic friction force. So these are the uh, uh, three uh, uh, states are the three uh, uh, state of uh, uh, the given block on the rough surface on application of force P. When I apply force P, it doesn't move, it is under static equilibrium. Then I simply call the opposing forces simple static friction force. Static friction force. When it is uh, uh, about to start, about to balance this, so it is going to have some maximum value, then I use that with a special letter Fs. I call that as a maximum value of static frictional force or limiting value of frictional force. And that is for the equilibrium to maintain, right? So every surface will have maximum friction force that can be developed for an equilibrium. Anything lesser than that is developed, suppose, between the contact surface. What does that mean? The application of force itself is lesser than the maximum friction force that is developed in the contact surface. So it is balanced, like that you should say. So the moment uh, when the application of force P exceeds this maximum static friction value, then uh, you see the effect in the block is not a static condition. It is going to translate, uh, accelerate in the direction of an unbalanced force that's p minus fs in this case so what would happen you have uh, at that time this friction force fs that would exist that we don't call it as fs we call it as fk so now this all uh, how do you put it in a um, convenient form always as a mechanical engineer or for that matter any uh, engineer would always prefer to represent the physical phenomena in the form of a graph Right? If that is so, let me take my friction force on a vertical axis and application force P on the horizontal axis. So as this uh, um, <coughs> uh, description, this explanation of uh, trial test of uh, increasing gradually this force P, what would happen if I have some value of P, I would have some value of F. If I keep doing that, uh, as long as uh, uh, I go to the point of maximum friction value that is possible for the chosen surface contact. 
so that would be differing from um, surface to surface how we will just now we will see so here it is fs which is maximum so till then this is going to be balancing so whatever my friction force here yeah that would be corresponding p here then f then here so this will go on till this maximum value or thereafter what will happen it cannot stay there so it will uh, get its value reduced from this friction value that's because of there is an energy spent on um, <clears throat> breaking their uh, locking of the two surfaces why it is uh, not moving initially when you apply p this friction forces are resisting in turn and physically if you look at <coughs> the contacting surfaces is not perfect flat surfaces so there are more uh, peaks and valleys so they get interlocked so the uh, um, amount of energy that spent on uh, breaking those interlocking and then you know, body is accelerating at that time you see this friction force magnitude maximum that is um, uh, there in between the two surfaces are cancelling of course it does the task of uh, retarding or it is uh, resisting the motion but it is not stopping the motion right the friction force fk cannot stop the motion but it will resist the expected motion if fk is uh, uh, zero then the motion uh, would be so fast it will be uh, uh, more right so supposing i have my uh, um, uh, carrom board that all of us uh, know that we enjoy playing it so i have my striker i have my coin so take a striker and clean the board don't put any powder on it so if you are uh, sending uh, uh, striker uh, you are uh, pushing uh, you are pushing the striker what is happening it is going and uh, um, gently you are pushing it so it doesn't go to the other end but you put the powder and then you just uh, uh, give the same pressure on the uh, uh, stri uh, striker what is happening it is easily going that means what it is under motion striker is under motion but the uh, friction force is existing in both the case without powder the friction force is more so the resistance is more for the motion so it stops in a shorter distance whereas uh, if it is powder is applied on it the same uh, force when you give that goes and stops at the uh, uh, longer distance or it goes and hit the opponent uh, frame uh, op opposite side frame so that's what is a simple uh, uh, way to understand what is happening to this friction so you see that uh, uh, then uh, um, this understanding would be clearly brought in here and that is existing that so once that is uh, having some uh, um, um uh, constant energy that is there which is pushing this uh, to the right accelerating it to the right then uh, you see that uh, the resistant force is slightly lower than this and then it goes asymptotically like this so if you see this value what is that asymptotically going uh, lower value is what is fk fk kinetic friction value and you see this angle here is very interesting uh, what should be this angle can anyone because whatever the application of force p you get the corresponding friction force in equilibrium state so as you increase you keep increasing this so this would be a square now so this angle is 45 degrees here right so this will go till this maximum value after that it will be the change of behavior so in this graph i can have uh, clearly uh, this peak is separating this side it is static condition and this side it is motion condition motion condition and what does this point refer to it is an impending state it is an impending state what do you mean by impending state impending its motion it is about to go its motion right that is what is an impending state or uh, that is that uh, the state where uh, the limiting point of your static equilibrium beyond that uh, the static equilibrium is lost then it is uh, uh, dynamic uh, condition of your uh, rigid body so any doubts so for what i have explained if you do not have a doubt i'm happy that you follow me 
and uh, now let us look at uh, how do you quantify this friction force what is that so this maximum static friction force is uh, proportional to is proportional to this normal this fs value is proportional to this normal and this proportionality constant only is now your uh, mu what is mu it's coefficient of static friction so let us have that with the subscript mu s yes. so when i say mu s yes, you also have mu k so this fs would be equal to mu s yes times n and similarly fk what is that we have observed is also proportional to the normal that's available and uh, and that would be equal to mu k times n so in this you see mu k is smaller than that of mu s because n is same in both the cases so n does not change the weight does not change as it is accelerating because it's a rigid body right yeah so any doubt anybody has any doubt are you all there no response why why there is no response should no i doubt, do call one by one should i do yeah priyansh pande is responded Does anybody shubham mithal are you there vivekananda reddy are you there mantra yes, shankar yes sir So what is the yes, problem sir. when I ask you something? No, uh, uh, responsibly responding to me. Why do you know? Don't do it. You don't follow, or you follow? You do not respond. How do I take it? See, when I take some feedback, if you give, that helps me to march ahead and continue my teaching. Because we are not uh, physically present in a classroom, and then no, I am able to see you. Uh, observe you uh, or read your face that you are able to follow me or not to do and uh, this is online mode so i have to presume that whatever i teach you are all reaching it you are getting it so in such cases some sensible uh, reply would help me right yeah so uh, this is how you can define your maximum value of friction <coughs> so what is that uh, important thing it is independent of the surface contact the mu s is independent of the surface contact that's important and let us define now uh, importantly um, uh, 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 two angles what are those angles called the friction angle and angle of repose i mean define now what is friction angle and uh, what is angle of repose repose so can anyone uh, uh, know this uh, terms already you heard of and uh, can you just give an idea are they same uh, what are those refer to pranesh Hmm. So, what is the friction angle? So, you have here. Look at this free body diagram itself. You have here maximum static friction, and you have here normal. So, you can always combine these two. Combine these two. You can compose them, right? If you compose them, what does that you get as a resultant? So, what is this resultant called? It's a resultant reaction. this is resultant reaction so the direction of this resultant reaction to the normal is what is friction angle by oh, yes so if this magnitude of fs is less than mu s times n so if f is less than mu s times n so mu s times n is what is equal to fs if f is less than mu s times n i would have here this angle and that is simply called <coughs> again um, angle between the resultant reaction to the normal so friction angle here refer to 
the uh, resultant that is taken at maximum static friction force so that uh, you would have uh, this phi uptime from the value of mu s itself so if i have mu s i know what is my phi s why because look at now this triangle this is a right angle triangle what is this opposite side fs what is this adjacent side it is normal so fs is mu s time n so tan phi s is what is opposite is mu s times n by n so n n goes off i get mu s so how this is related now you are able to follow so my friction angle is readily known if i know my mu s value or if i know my friction angle i know what is my surface correct tan of friction angle is what is the mu s of the surface contact <coughs> so this is an important relation right so any any doubt in this if there is no doubt let us now understand what do you mean by angle of impulse right so for that again let us have this uh, uh, simple experimental trial so i have my rough surface which is horizontal and uh, i will have again the same rough surface which is horizontal but now that surface is uh, 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 can be uh, the orientation of the surface can be changed so what i do i have here a hinge and this is pin so this surface can be now rotate rotatable so i'm going to have again a block on this surface which weighs w so when i have this surface now uh, 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 horizontal i can rotate this surface Uh, so that uh, what would happen to this block is what we have to understand so at this point of time i would have my free body diagram is what i will have my free body diagram i have opposing um, reaction which is normal yan here and uh, uh, this is that free body diagram now this is balanced the moment i rotate now this uh, uh, at an angle say now at this angular orientation i have say this angle is theta and uh, i have now my block this so now what is my free body diagram i will have again my weight component weight vertical i think here w and uh, you see now my normal would be always in this direction right perpendicular to the surface so i would have my normal n here what is drawn would be acting now here this is my normal n so how can i justify that value now i can resolve this w into two components that's what resolution and composition is the first step that is required for your mechanics study what you are seeing so i can have now this angle is theta there is a normal to this slope and that will have to the vertical also same angle theta so now what does this uh, vertical component that is w cos theta and what is this horizontal component w sin theta see now w sin theta is what is now is like force p in the previous experimental trial we looked at here right p so that's pushing this block so now what's happening here when the platform is horizontal it is perfectly sitting and no distraction nothing i don't apply any external force it is in a static equilibrium now when i rotate this uh, you see that the angle slope is going to make your weight uh, resolved one along the slope another the normal to the slope so the balance reaction n can be uh, balancing w cos theta but there is w sin theta part which is there here is acting down pushing this block down right so uh, how do you now uh, what is the status of this block now can anyone say will it be falling down or it is staying there so the discussion goes again a similar way that what we have looked at here so when i apply a force p which is very small value there is a reaction force friction force f balancing so that would go to the maximum value of fs till then it is balancing after that it cannot balance and that is the maximum value for equilibrium that's what we have seen 
So similarly, now what would happen? As I rotate this, I increase this angular orientation theta. The value of this force is going to increase. Your sine theta from zero, sine zero is zero. Sine uh, uh, theta value as it is increasing from zero, the value is going to be increasing. So W sine of uh, uh, positive angle is going to push this. So the um, uh, force component along this is keeps increasing. So when this value is small value, that means that angle value is smaller angle. So at that time, I'll have only friction force. But if this value is going to increase, so that is the point where this F value here initially is going to reach to Fs value. At that time, what would happen? That is the limiting or impending state of this block about to slot sliding. So if this is Fs, that is the impending state. The maximum friction is developed here. So further increase in angular position would make this block sliding on its own, right? So that is not required. So when it is there here, you would have now this angle now, um, which is the resultant of these two, or resultant of these two, right? Let me take the other color. Resultant of these two, which is reaction, and this angle is the phi s, phi s. So uh, what is this uh, normal direction is perpendicular to this slope. So this theta is equal to phi s. So this theta is, then the slope is called, then the slope is called angle of repose. Is it clear? <coughs> is it clear? Any doubt? Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Yes means uh, you, you understood that, right? No doubts. Okay. No doubts. Okay. Uh, so now uh, let's proceed with solving a simple problem. I can also put you a question now here. Uh, see, there is uh, what is this is happening? Uh, if you have uh, this angle of repose. The slope is not equal to angle of repose, is greater than angle of repose. That means greater than this friction angle here. What would happen? It is going to accelerate down. When it is going to accelerate down, this mu s is going to be mu k. This mu s is going to be represented by mu k. Uh, 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 sorry, f s is going to be replaced by f k. That is mu k times n. So whatever we have studied, the same uh, thing is applicable here. <coughs> My question is now, uh, uh, is it always that the equilibrium is disturbed only by means of sliding? This is what is called the sliding, right? Sliding. So if I have smaller box like this or a disc on the surface, it will only slide. But you see on the other hand, if I have a, a block which is uh, uh, compared to that of base dimension, the height is more than what would happen in the same scenario. Right, so I'm going to have now again this platform hinged here, controllable, right? So I have here now a block of uh, more height. Sorry, board is slipping. Why is it hanging? <clears throat> Are you able to see the board? It's not responding, acting spare. Are you able to see the board? Yeah, just come back. Sir? Yeah. Sir, what is the difference between angle of repose and angle of friction, sir? Friction angle is that uh, angle between the resultant of friction and normal to the normal. Angle between uh, angle between the resultant of friction and normal to the normal is what is friction angle. What is angle of repose is the slope corresponding to the value of angle of friction angle. On that time, the block will slide on its own or about to start its uh, sliding motion down or that is the maximum angle to maintain the equilibrium of block on the slope. 
that's an impending state right so uh, that's what you have seen if this theta value is zero that is first state so there is no friction there is uh, uh, absolutely stable there Sta static condition so if i slightly increase the one degree angle i give instead of saying there p force i give 10 newton 20 newton and so on i give now one degree here but the block is staying there itself why the block is staying there itself when i ask you are able to answer because there is a friction opposing this w sin theta component right so if i keep increasing the angle can the block stay there obviously not see when it is 90 degrees there is the block going to stay there it's fallen down already so you don't require to go to 90 degrees that it is falling down so as you keep increasing this angle at the point this block is about to start its own sliding down and just before that at uh, that point is what is an impending state of equilibrium static equilibrium and that angle is what is called an angle of repose or you can say that is the maximum slope for which a block can be kept where it is impending to hold its equilibrium or impending to slide down on its own you can say that way that is an angle of repose so angle of repose is uh, defined like that it's a slope is it clear whereas friction yes, angle yes, uh, is defined not necessarily on slope it is uh, uh, always you have uh, uh, um, friction force developed to oppose an application of the force uh, when it reaches its maximum value you will have a resultant of maximum static friction and normal and its resultant into direction uh, to the normal is what is friction angle that's by default defined that is where we are relating pi s to mu s tan uh, inverse or mu s is tan inverse of or tan phi s you are you are you are connecting these two right yeah so now <clears throat> instead of this smaller block i have a block which is of uh, quite a higher height of the block compared to that of base dimension is more. So now what would happen? I have my, uh, uh, this is height H. And this is its uh, CG location and consider this block is homogeneous. So uh, it's exactly at the geometric center. I have my center of gravity also. <laughs> so now I would have my uh, reaction here. Uh, which is uh, collinear in this case because uh, it's homogeneous block like this, right? If I assume like this, now what would happen? It is uh, in the static condition, right? It is uh, it is staying there, no problem. So now, if you take the same uh, in this similar fashion of uh, previous discussion, I have some angle slope. Some angle, it's not an angle of repose. I have now the same platform is tilted by an angle theta, by an angle theta. So here it is uh, theta r, you can say, theta r, you can say, to say angle of repose. So I have theta. So theta means it is less than theta r, you can say. Theta is less than theta r. So theta r is defined angle of repose where it's sliding on its own we said right so now let us look at uh, the same block on this now what is its uh, free body diagram the weight would have two components that is one w cos theta other one w w sin theta now, interestingly, if you look at this normal is not going to be collinear with this. When you consider this rigid body uh, ideology. So in this case, I do not uh, worry about the geometry of this block. So it's a particle ideology. So I can have this all forces collinear or concurrent and solve. That's what we will do a problem and you can see I will apply Lamis theorem. I would combine these two, I'll take uh, uh, this reaction. I have this force and an application of force. So I can make, uh, assume that to be a concurrent force system. Because if I neglect the geometry of this block, though the application or the point of application of these all are different on a block, I can make them as a concurrent system of force. That's an advantage that we have already stated at the module one itself. 
one important ideology of mechanics called the particle mechanics you have particle mechanics itself is a chapter uh, module uh, chapter in the uh, textbook uh, uh, bern johnson or rc ebler and, uh, and so on they start with the particle mechanics then they go into rigid body mechanics so if you look at this this is a rigid body mechanics the geometrical aspects that you are seeing so let us consider the width is b here and this is height this normal is not going to be collinear in line with that because uh, this locking of them are there this uh, distribution if you look at in this that would be uh, something like this you would see that uh, the distribution of the normal will be more on the leading side compared to that of so maybe maybe in this case in this case it is staying there so this is uniformly distributed here correct so this would be the resultant of that is collinear with that it's balanced <coughs> whereas when you rotate the tendency of this sliding down is appearing at the contact surface at the same time there is also a tendency of tilting of this about this happening why that is tilting of this is happening if it is not a disc it is a drum now disc means you have height is smaller and base is so wider and uh, you have no chances that it will be uh, tipping whereas you have height more and base dimension smaller when you hold instead of sliding it will tip right so why is it tipping is because this normal is not collinear with this weight component that would come somewhat like this so the distribution is changing here it is uniform distribution and here the distribution is more on the leading side uh, compared to that of the trailing side the other end so what will happen the resultant of this <coughs> would act at a distance from here at a distance from here say distance x and this is my normal so now normal and w sin theta is not collinear that's what you have to understand that is what you have to understand so if you look at uh, now what would happen there is a couple form <coughs> this n into x is a couple now or about this point if i take w sin theta into x there is a couple right and w cos theta into this height there is a couple so you have to also have a moment balance that's what is the difference between particle mechanics only translation so you have two equations sigma f x equal to 0 sigma f y equal to 0 Uh, these are sufficient for uh, contacts or smooth surface additionally now you have this fs equal to mu s n an additional uh, equation comes from dry friction right <coughs> and similarly uh, fs equal to mu s n or less than mu s n it can be equal to or less than uh, this to ensure that static equilibrium this is to ensure the static equilibrium when you have like this rigid body in addition to this you would also have to have a moment balance sigma fx equal to 0 sigma fy equal to 0 and you also will have moment balance and when you have moment balance that's not only sufficient and you see this uh, friction force what is developed definitely should not there should be uh, uh, it's not fs so this is f here less than or equal to mu sn you can say and here also it is the f this is also f uh, one minute uh, don't uh, this is not f first it's friction force less than or equal to mu sn and here again uh, this f should be less than mu sn that's an important condition because you won't reach to this and then it would be uh tipping so this is a condition for tipping there are two scenarios that this equilibrium can be disturbed one is one is one is tipping another one is sliding so sliding is only present in a particle mechanics tipping is to be also investigated in rigid body mechanics <laughs> in such cases this is an example problem so what is the condition for tipping now so condition for tipping is this x value whatever that you have if as long as this x value is uh, uh, within this uh, contact surface then it is fine if this x value is going to increase as i in, uh, increase this angle theta this x value is going to be pushing this down like this so when x is equal to b by 
when x is equal to b by 2. That means the b by 2 is what? b is this width. So this maximum possible distance uh, from this to this outer uh, front leading edge is b by 2. When x is equal to b by 2, the tipping will happen. But that is not uh, uh, sufficient. It's a necessary condition for tipping. But what is the additionally important uh, condition required? You also require to ensure that the friction force what is existing is less than mu s m. Mu s m. Right? So I know that uh, the moment I start tilting this, I do not have only this W sin theta balanced by uh, um, N in vertical equilibrium. And W cos theta is balanced by my friction force. So my friction force is there here. This is my friction force. F. This F will be Fs when it is equal to mu sm. When this angle is angle of repose. But the question now is, before uh, uh, if this attain first or this attain first is what is condition. So for sliding to happen, what is the necessary condition? F should be equal to mu sm. But what is also an important, it is not sufficient. This is an important necessary condition, but not sufficient condition. Why? Because my x value should be less than b by 2. The normal should not come to this edge. Normal should be between 0 to b by 2. Then I have my f value reaching to this. Then this uh, block, even it is height, uh, the drum which is uh, placed on this, would not tip. It will slide first before it is tipping. So the state of equilibrium, static equilibrium, would be disturbed by sliding. If the surface is more rough surface, then uh, tipping may happen before sliding. So tipping to occur, x should be b by 2, but the friction what is developed should be less than mu s m. So look at this, is that the important? So there can be two scenarios where the static equilibrium can be disturbed. One is by tipping, for that x should be b by 2. And that's not sufficient to say the friction force what is there here should be less than mu s m. Right? If sliding to take place before tipping, what is that necessary condition? The friction force what is there exists here should reach its maximum friction value, V s times n. But that is not sufficient because uh, uh, x, what is my x position? Normal, where is it located from this uh, center of the contact? So that is uh, located uh, uh, such that it is less than V by 2. Then only sliding would take place. So this is how you should say. So this is very important theory of your dry friction. You should not have any doubts in this. So we will solve some problem in the next class uh, based on this blocks and slopes. And then we will get into a, an important application of friction called wedge friction problems, which are a, a requirement of examination point of view. And then we will solve some later friction problems. So two more classes I would take to complete this topic, uh, module three. And then we will go ahead with uh, um, module 4, which is an another important module, right? Uh, so coming week, uh, Monday is a holy uh, non-instructional day. So we may not have class on that day. So we will have again class on next Wednesday, right? Is that clear? So if you have understood yes, this, yeah, if you have understood any doubt in this tipping and sliding condition for tipping and the condition for sliding, do you have any doubts? Please ask me. If you do not have any doubts, I'm very happy. So let me uh, stop recording.